Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kai Chen Yang from Peking University. I'm going to introduce Q cluster, clustering packets for flow scheduling. Flow scheduling is to design the forwarding sequences of packets for some optimization goals. If the switch decides to always forward the packets of flow to the queue with the lowest priority, the flow may starve to death when congestion occurs. That is to say, all packets of this flow could be buffered in the queue. Therefore, flow scheduling directly affects user experience of applications. There are four classical kinds of flow scheduling tasks. When only pursuing the optimal flow completion time, FCT in short, the optimal scheme is shortest remaining processing time first, SRPT in short. SRPT follows a simple rule that a flow with the shortest remaining bytes goes first. However, in most cases, switches cannot obtain the remaining bytes because the existing prevalent network protocols such as TCP and UDP do not support it. Therefore, least attained surface service first, LAS in short, is proposed. LAS lets the flow with the smallest bytes sent goes first so as to approximate SRPT. Except FCT, other scenarios may focus on fairness. A typical task is fair queuing, that every flow should go in round-robin manner. There are other scenarios that have deadlines for certain tasks. For example, deadline-aware scheduling optimizes FCT on the premise of meeting deadlines as many as possible. We show an example of flow scheduling following SRPT. The value in the blocks is the corresponding remaining flow size, and the optimal scheduling is shown in the figure. Nowadays, the commodity switches can only support FIFO queues. As shown in the figure, a single FIFO queue can hardly schedule flows. Luckily, switches have multiple FIFO queues and also support priority queues. This provides basis for flow scheduling. As shown in the figure, multiple FIFO priority queues can achieve flow scheduling. Leveraging the multiple priority queues of switches, researchers have proposed a number of flow scheduling algorithms for different tasks. The existing solutions mainly have the following three limitations. First, most solutions are not gener generic. That is to say, they are specialized for only one scheduling task. And thus, uh, second, a large number of solutions are not practical. For example, NACO requires a large number of queues and AFQ requires complex operations of rotating the priorities of queues. Finally, some solutions need traffic pattern and thus must measure the traffic and configure the queues in advance, such as peers. Our design goal is to devise a framework that overcomes all above limitations. First, our framework should be generic. It can be applied to most existing scheduling tasks. Second, our framework should be practical. It can work with limited FIFO queues. Third, our framework should be traffic agnostic. It should be adaptive to various traffic patterns and can work without measuring the traffic pattern in advance. Our insight is that flow scheduling is essentially a queue clustering problem. That is to say, we need to cluster packets with similar weights to the same queue to make use of priority queues for flow scheduling. For example, for SRPT, we should send the packet with the smallest remaining flow size to the queue with the highest priority and the, queue, and the packet with the largest remaining flow size to the queue with the lowest priority. Obviously, the more queues, the better the scheduling. SRPT will not work well if we mix large and small flows in the same queue. Note that the packet weight is specific to flow scheduling tasks. For SRPT, the weight is the remaining flow size. 
For LAS, the weight is the number of bytes already sent by the flow. Based on this insight, we propose the Q-Cluster framework. The workflow of Q-Cluster consists of three steps. First, we design an algorithm named SCM sketch to query the packet weight and update the Q-weight. Second, considering various vectors, including the distance between the packet weight and the Q-weight, the cluster size, and the packet disorder, we choose the queue for every incoming packet. Third, for different flow scheduling tasks, we adopt different dequeuing policies. Next, we introduce each step in detail. To support queue cluster, we need three types of per flow information. First, for each flow, we need the number of bytes sent. For scheduling tasks such as LAS, we need this information as a packet weight. Second, for each flow, we need the arrival time of the last packet. We need this information to split message to clear outdated information and split flow lead to help avoid packet disorder. Here, message refers to a reused connection, which is common in data center. Third, for each flow, we need the queue to reach the last packet or send to avoid packet disorder. For example, for LAS, if the last packet of a flow was sent to the queue with the lowest priority, then a newly incoming packet of this flow can only be sent to the queue with the lowest priority to avoid packet disorder. To provide the above information, we propose a variant of the counter-mean sketch called the SCM sketch, which extends each counter of the CM sketch to a bucket consisting of three fields that are time, counter, and a QID in sequence. Similarly, the SCM sketch has D arrays, each of which is associated with a pairwise independent hash function. We first describe in certain process, similar to the CM sketch for each incoming packet. The SCM sketch locates a bucket in each array with the association, associated hash function. Typically, as shown in the figure, the SCM sketch updates the time fields in all, all the located buckets to the current time T6 and increments the counter by one. We can also increment the counter by the bias of the packet for more accurate statistics. Is the difference between the current time T6 and the oldest time field in the located buckets, such as T2, exceeds the predefined threshold, we identify that this packet belongs to a new message as the SCM sketch first clears this bucket before insertion. For each incoming packet, we query the minimum value in the counter fields of the located bucket for the calculation of its packet weight. For example, in, in this figure, the minimum value is six, is seven, or is six, sorry. The operations of the QIDs are too complex and we do not detail them here. Next, we describe how an incoming packet chooses its queue. First, if the queue weight is calculated as the average of the weights of all packets buffered in the queue, as shown in the figure, the queue has a weight of 3.17. According to the classical clustering ideology, every packet chooses the queue with the smallest di distance, and we have different distance definition for different flow scheduling tasks. For fair queuing, we need clusters of the same size. Considering the highly skilled network traffic, our insight is that the weight difference between two adjacent queues is far larger than the smaller queue weight. Therefore, the number of flows in the cluster is approximately inverse, inversely proportional to queue weight. To achieve fair queuing, the decree implicit should be weighted round the robin. Let PI be the cluster size of QI, MI be the weight of QI, and WA0 be the packet weight of the incoming packet. For QI and QI plus one, we need a threshold between MI and MI plus one to determine which queue the packet should be sent to. To address this issue, we propose a technique called adaptive threshold to adjust the threshold based on the cluster size. The parameter alpha will increase or decrease according to PI and the PI plus one to control the sizes of the two clusters at equal size. For LAS, SRPT, and deadline aware, 
packets in the queue with the highest priority will decode first. As a large number of flows only contain a small number of packets, same size clusters will lead large flows to block small flows in the queue with the highest priority. To address this issue, we let the cluster size to be proportional to Q weight. Similarly, we can also use adapt the adaptive threshold proposed above with only minor modifications, and we do not detail them here. Due to the change of the Q weight, when the previous packets of the same flow are still in a congested low priority queue, the subsequent packets could be sent to higher priority queues. In this case, packet disorder could happen. Our method of packet disorder avoidance is based on an assumption that all the packets in your flowlet will decue before the next flowlet comes. Note that our SCM sketch records the time and the QID simultaneously, leveraging the SCM sketch we can identify the beginning of a flowlet and record the QID where packets in queue. For different flow scheduling tasks, we have different strategies. For fair queuing, since the decueing policy in fair queuing is weighted round robin, for each flow, all packets in a flowlet must in queue the same queue as the first packet in the flowlet. For LAS, SRPT, and deadline aware, the packets in the queue with a high priority will be queued earlier. Therefore, every packet in the flowlet must be in queue queue with a low, lower or equal priority compared to the last packet. In addition to the four well-known flow scheduling tasks described above, two clusters can also be applied to various flow scheduling tasks. Here, we demonstrate these tasks and their corresponding packet weights methods of packet disorder avoidance and decoding places. Next, we show our experimental results. We have fully implemented our Q cluster prototype on a testbed with a Tofino switch and seven servers, where six servers work as senders and the rest one server works as a receiver. We enable ECN on the switch and the servers. We also use NS2 simulation to compare Q cluster with other algorithms that cannot be implemented on Tofino switches. Similarly, there are six servers working as senders and the restaurant server working as receiver. Here we present the experimental results of fair QE in our test bed. First, we find that no matter what the initial thresholds are, the thresholds can quickly converge to similar values. Second, we find that no matter what the initial thresholds are, the cluster sizes can quickly converge to the same. Third, we find that the initial thresholds have a neglected impact on the FCT under various traffic patterns and different traffic loads. <clears throat> Here, we compare the performance of QCluster with previous solutions. We find that QCluster achieves comparable com performance to peers, which requires measuring traffic patterns in advance to configure its thresholds. Then we present the experimental results in NS2 simulation. In fair queuing, we find Q cluster can always achieve better performance and fairness than AFQ under different traffic loads. In deadline aware, we find Q cluster can always achieve better throughput and FCT under different traffic loads. <clears throat> Finally, we show the impact of our method of packet disorder avoidance of the packet order ratio, ra ratio and FCT. We find that our method can obviously increase the packet order ratio where the FCT remains almost unchanged. Uh, that's all, thank you for your listening. Awesome, thanks for the talk. Is there any questions? Okay, uh, let me first ask a question. So Kai Chen, I, uh, it's awesome talk. Uh, so all the experiment is done on the NS2 platform, right? Uh, no, uh, a part of experiments are done in uh, on our test bed. Uh, some 
uh, some algorithms cannot be implemented implemented on programmable switches, uh, such as such as uh, here AFQ. So we simulated them in S2 in simulation. Oh, okay. So part of them is on the hardware, on the programmable maybe routers, right? The, and the part of them is on an S2, okay, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, can you give some details about the, the test, the hardware test, uh, maybe the programmable routers, switches? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, they are uh, they are Tofino Wedge a 100 BF uh, 32X switch. Uh, uh, they are bought from Intel, I think. Uh, uh, or do you want me to introduce the st structure of the switch or? Uh, uh, I... well, it's fine, it's fine, okay. Uh, okay, I can see it, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so another question is, did you do any large scale test? Because this is only the six centers, one receiver, right? Did you any use maybe more node to simulate a real network? Uh, flow scheduling is, uh, is limited to one switch usually. So uh, usually a, a switch will not connect to uh, so much other switches. So, uh, we yes, we just do six senders and one receivers experiment. We do not do a large scale simulation. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs>